Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to yet another episode of Amplified and Intensified. My name is Eric Taylor, and today we are welcoming back Mr. Allen from Recorded Feature. How are you doing today, Allen? Not too bad, man. How are you doing today? Good, man. Good. So this, everything that is going on this week, and we're, there's so many people that are talking about Log4j. I think that that horse is being beat. You know, that horse is being beat to death, you know, but I think we want to talk about this new ransomware variant and really dive into this whole mess that's going on and really expand and help educate everybody. Um, so I was seeing this come up from another individual who was bringing up where this ransomware group, um, uh, Kashori, Kashari, I, I don't know how to pr properly pronounce it. So I'm but sure I think maybe, maybe we do know this is a real person coming to find out. Um, but apparently this is a ransomware that was being deployed on vulnerable people, uh, vulnerable systems that were impacted for log for J systems that was essentially putting out the user of uh, this person's business's phone number and email address. As part of the ransomware note, when we started seeing some of this stuff being leaked out on Twitter, you know, it said, you know, your data has been encrypted and stolen by the Kashari family. If you want to decrypt, call this phone number and, and, or this email address, which I was literally thinking, you know, when I first saw this, I first saw this when it hit, you know, the dark, the quote unquote dark web and the Twitter and stuff like that. I literally thought this was some sort of weird proof of concept type of ransomware, right? Um, so, you know, I went on my IR side, you know, I'm downloading samples, I'm putting it into, you know, um, some of the things that I put this as, you know, we use this tool sometimes when we want to do something that's public facing, you know, where we would actually extract the file or get the hash and extract it and see that this was an actual ransomware payload. The one thing that really struck off that why I really thought this was a proof of concept was down here and I'll zoom this in a little bit. It's doing a get request, which is very, very odd for ransomware. It was getting the encryption key from the web server. It wasn't submitting, Hey, this is a encryption key I use. So that way people can recover their files. It was when encryption key am I using now I will deploy my payload and encrypt it and you're i'm sure you're going to talk about this a little bit but a lot of stuff that i've been hearing in the background here recently is that there is no way to decrypt these files because this uh kashari gentleman it has no decryptor information he has nothing um and as of at least this morning when i was going back and recapping some of this stuff I seen that this server is no longer online. So the current payload that was out there is not available anymore to encrypt it. So if you do get this ransomware variant downloaded on your system, it's not going to do anything because it's trying to phone home. The, ser the recipient server is not there. So there's nothing for it to, you know, encrypt on. So that's kind of what I've done, at least from my forensic side of things. And why I thought it was a proof of concept that I seen there was a whole massive write up. You guys have done a lot more research than I have. So I definitely want to bring you guys on and say, Hey, is what I'm thinking actually correct? Is are y'all getting the same sentiment or what are y'all seeing and could be able to advise us a little better? Yeah. So I think you're spot on. Um, whatever happened, it, it was obviously, um, not ready for a prime time, if you will, ransomware. Uh, it's not very good. It, it doesn't do things like it can't encrypt large files. Um, and, and so the, the, you know, few places where we've seen it, it, it just, it, it, it encrypts a little bit of the things, you know, a little bit of the files on the system, and then it just dies. Um, it's an interesting concept in that it's a really lightweight ransomware. I think I saw it was like 12K or something mm -hmm. really small like that. I don't remember the exact number, but super, super small, lightweight ransomware is really interesting because we don't see a lot of that anymore. More, more and more ransomwares turned into bloatware, if you will. Um, and, 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 and so, you know, some, some interesting kind of concepts in there, but, but yeah, you're absolutely right. 
Obviously, the email address and phone number in there is completely fake. Um, well, not fake, they're real, but not, you know, not people who can actually give you a key. But even if you had a key, I don't know that there's any way. So even if you found somebody to pay a ransom to, um, and, and I think it's Shiva, actually, if you send Shiva a note, he'll, he'll give you a key. I'm not sure that you'll be able to actually unencrypt the, uh, unencrypt the files. <laughs> For those who are listening on the audio version of this, Shiva just held up his keys chain. So um, he's showing us keys. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I didn't uh, think about it at first. Um, you know, maybe there I'll have to go back into my analysis. Maybe the original payload is cached on one of my servers for when I was doing the analysis. So maybe Emisoft or something can build out maybe a decryptor for these something like this. I don't know. It, it wouldn't surprise me if they, if they were able to, um, you know, I, I, I haven't done the in-depth analysis, you know, our, our researchers have, and I've just kind of read their reports, but I'm guessing with how hastily this feels put together, there's probably a way to build out a, or, or, or get a decryptor for it. I think what scares me is exactly what you said, that get requests to pull the key down. Um, if they've implemented encryption correctly it may be really difficult to do that now with that server being offline um you know maybe that's you know doj or somebody acting quickly and those keys will be you know readily available for people um and with those keys you'd be able to build the decryptors we just there's a whole lot we don't know you know it's one of these things where it's been such a disaster of a week um you know like merry freaking christmas to everybody um uh uh that Th that there's so many different strings going on right now. It's hard to keep track of everything that's happening. Yeah. So do you think this is, you know, this is a true proof of concept and they were, so well, I guess, let me take a step back. Your team has done some forensics. Has this been really tied to vulnerable servers of log J four? Yeah. And that's really the only place that we've seen it. Um, so which again is kind of interesting that the, the, the only place that we've seen it is exploiting, uh, those servers. We haven't seen, you know, phishing delivery. We haven't seen any other kind of, you know, initial, uh, you know, uh, initial access broker or, 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 or any other kind of routines like that. No discussion on any of the underground forums, you know, before the, the attacks, there's been some discussions after. So, so really the only tie-in we have is to this particular vulnerability, which is really odd. Do you think this is a, again, a proof of concept to other wannabe or potential ransomware groups say, Hey, we did it. Y'all step up and let's start doing it. And we're going to start seeing a whole bunch of crap coming up in the next couple of weeks or what, what's, what is your thoughts and maybe some of the thoughts of recorded future? So we, I don't know. I don't know that we can draw any conclusions on the limited data set that we have. You know, I mean, the other thing is that while this has been deployed in the wild, I and mean, obviously you've seen the samples, I don't think it's been all that widely deployed. Um, and, and so it's really hard, like, you know, we're not seeing any consistency across targets or anything like that other than love for J. Um, uh, uh, so I, 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 or love forge, I don't want to really wade into that debate. Um, you know, because we have to debate everything in cybersecurity. Wow. Uh, uh, but yeah, cause you know, I've called it long for J, you know, for, for years. And now all of a sudden I find out that I'm speaking, saying it wrong. Um, <laughs> but, um, but I haven't seen any commonality across targets or anything like that. So it could be a new group. And it also could be a group that's not oper operating out of Russia. Um, you know, uh, that, that, you know, is cause we are seeing more ransomware out of China and Iran places like that. And, uh, you know, the, the most famous, uh, commissary is Ahmad Kanasari, who, um, uh, was the, uh, uh, an Iranian brand Ayatollah. So when I first saw the name, I'm like, uh, is that tied to, you know, I mean, that would be a real, real specific tie to Iran. Um, and I'm yeah. not saying that that's true. There's no other evidence of that. You know, the, the most likely explanation, as you say, is because the name is in the, uh, uh, the name in the, you know, the email address, but it, it just feels like this doesn't feel like a Russian operation to me, 
but I don't have any evidence for that yet. You know, it's, we have to continue to collect evidence. So just kind of a gut feeling and be very, very clear. My gut feelings are wrong a lot. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just the fact that, you know, that it wasn't pulling, you know, something from a Tor network, the server was hosted in Louisiana. You know, I didn't do a lot of, I didn't dig a lot into the, the stuff except for geolocate. It's like, okay, the phone number is tied to a cell phone. It's, you know, the IP address is tied to an ISP and they're both in Louisiana, things of that nature. And so it was, it was really, really weird to see all this report come out about that. Do you, is there any si insight of why this business and individual may be getting targeted? No, no, not at all. I mean, you know, there, there's nothing, nothing in the record. No, um, you know, no, uh, 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 that email address isn't associated with any, you know, real high profile figure or, or anything like that. Um, not, you know, there, there's no tie in that I've seen for why this person will be targeted. Could be just completely random, not likely, but yeah, no, nothing that I've seen. I've always been taught never to trust coincidences. Right, right, exactly. That, I mean, you know, we learned that from Ben Kenobi back in 1977. <laughs> so, uh, yep. This just feels like a really nice false flag and a proof of concept to let people know what's possible out there. Yeah, and, and I, I think you're right. You know, I mean, I, I hate the the idea of delving into false flags because that that always takes you down a bad private hole. But 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 at the very least. The, the proof of absolutely some sort of proof of concept or some code kind of like want to cry that got out a little too soon. Um, mm. uh, um, but you know, something that is certainly an interesting thing that could be built on. And that's the part that really worries me is, um, you know, taking what they've done here, uh, to build sort of this lightweight ransomware. And then what can you then do with that lightweight ransomware? That's the part that, that, that I'm really concerned about. These attacks right now seem to be few and far between, um, my phone would, and hopefully it stays that way, but what's going to come next. Yeah, it's very interesting. You know, so, you know, when I took that sample, you know, that, uh, hybrid analysis hadn't seen it or anything like that, like, oh, yay, I get to submit something this week. <laughs> So, you know, hybrid, me and hybrid analysis was talking and, you know, going through it and I told them how I found the sample and all that stuff. And, um, you know, so they're, they're putting it in. So, you know, a lot of the machine learning and all that's, uh, algorithms that are out there, they're starting to finally detect it. You know, some of them are very definitely a little bit slower, you know, we'll post the, the hybrid analysis links there as well, um, in the show notes. So that way everybody can go look and see if your AV vendor is currently detecting this payload or not so um yeah so but you know it, it, again this goes to the kind of evolution broadly that we're seeing with ransomware groups where they're finding better ways to avoid detection so you know they, they started by doing as much as possible in memory and now edr you know platforms are catching well a lot of edr platforms were there but a lot of people weren't monitoring what was you know what was being detected in memory so that's starting to catch up. So now kind of going the other direction, we're going to create a file so small that it avoids detection, um, um, by, by, uh, by, by a lot of security vendors because it's smaller than malware that we currently see. Um, mm -hmm. so that's the, you know, again, where we're talking about that proof of concept, that's that, uh, uh, and, and, you know, scariness that's that, that worries me is this is another way for, for ran that ransomware groups may avoid our normal detection mechanisms. Yeah. So, I mean, to, uh, the credit of, you know, our favorite people, CrowdStrike and, um, you know, even though we like to beat up Sentinel one from time to time, because we think they're a little bit, at least I think they're a little goofy. Um, but at least when I threw this payload at both of those, both of them picked it up right away because of their machine learning. So good. You know, those who are out there and maybe CrowdStrike or Sentinel one fans know that, you know, while 99% of these people didn't know about this, at least the machine learning built into those two platforms worked right away. So, right. Well, and I mean, and that's the nice thing about ransomware. One of the nice things is 
there, you have to do things a certain way in ransomware. Like, you know, even if you make a really small file and can avoid detection on a lot of things, the way you, you call the crypto libraries, the way you, um, uh, call the files in order to start the encryption process and so on. There are only so many different ways that you can do that. So that machine learning can pick up on, on, on those files once they start getting to that activity. Yeah. And the file is really, so when you talk about that, it's a, it's a really good point. Um, you know, this file that's there is not the traditional file. It doesn't do VSS admin. It, it doesn't do a uh, scanning for files. A lot of the traditional things that this thing does, uh, that most ransomware payloads do, this does not do at all. So it doesn't have the traditional behaviors of a ransomware payload. So for the machine algorithm, the behavior analytics built into these Lucy's two platforms to be able to detect this thing right away by holy shit, block this thing, roll this thing back was just great. I mean, massive credit to those two companies, right? So. Absolutely. And, and good on them. And, you know, uh, uh, you know, they've got strong detection mechanisms in, in both of the, in both the platforms, especially in the Falcon 54. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, it's, it's good to see that those kind of things are, are being caught. Awesome. Well, that's really it for me. I, again, I wanted to thank Alan for coming on here. I wanted to at least get and bring this type of information to every, th everybody. Um, Mr. Shiva, I haven't had a chance to let you speak at all. Do you have any questions at all, sir? I'm listening and learning, man. I got two of you in the room. You don't need me. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, thanks Alan for joining us and until next time, we'll talk to you then. All right. Take care. Y'all have a good night. Good afternoon. One of those time frames. Right. <laughs> <laughs>